The building of virtual worlds really enables uh, the ability to kind of like bring people together all across the globe regardless of who they are or where they're located and I think that aligns really well with Cardano's mission to connect people um, all across the world. The key theme for the Cardano Summit was the world comes together on Cardano. Our community is all over the world uh, and we have a duty to try and bring them together. Dreamwave is a virtual events platform that uh, enables brands to build events or festivals that are custom. So they're bespoke uh, destinations that their community can come to. What we're trying to do with Dreamwave is, and Active Theory really, we've always been trying to build the web, kind of the future of the web before it happens. It's a dream, it's a thing that you can kind of create out of nothing. Um, it's kind of an alternate reality. That's kind of the, 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 where the name comes from. It's kind of like this chill, ambient, uh, alternate reality where we can make worlds to be whatever we want. These are things that we've been playing with for a while. 3D worlds, uh, multi-user environments, the ability for people to connect um, together in a space just on the web. And they demonstrate how we try and push the web forward. What is lovely about working with creative people is that when you find someone you really gel with, you just push each other further and further and further. Now, that's when creativity becomes contagious. Everything that we decided to do, we pushed each other backwards and forwards. And you know what? Forget the technology. The thing that makes working with the guys at Active Theory who built Dreamwave so nice is that they're creative at heart. When I got brought onto the project, I didn't know that much about the Cardano Foundation or Input Output. Um, and so I did a quick Google, and there was two things that popped up. The first was their, uh, the way they approach the technology is very environmentally friendly. And the other was that it was very sort of, sort of tech focused. So um, concepting around it being like speed and processing of transactions and the quantity and stuff like that. So they obviously went with the uh, more environmentally friendly aspect. And I presented a few different concepts with that. And the way that sort of creative process worked is thematically trying to align with like what's the main visual people would see when they come to this event. So what's an environmentally friendly sort of aesthetic? Well, I presented a lot of options and they kind of went for the most extreme one, being the like floating turtle island that could like rise out of the water and potentially fly in the sky. So it's interesting to see their appetite for that. And I think that was a really good indication as to how far we could keep pushing it. And so I've just been kind of pushing for more and more sort of extreme creative concepting. We always try and do stuff that's a little bit disruptive. We are the greenest, we create the greenest blockchain in the world, one of them. And therefore, let's make a world that's welcoming, let's make one that feels environmentally friendly, but without ramming it down your throat. I don't think once in this whole world do we say it's environmental, instead we let our actions speak. The experience is green. There is a sense of wonder. You know, it's slightly surreal, a little bit unreal. There are giant butterflies, there are these stingrays flying through the sky. It's very friendly, it's very welcoming. It's a little, it's a little slice of blockchain paradise, if that's how you want it, a little piece of Eden. You have to kind of consider the end-to-end the -end experience, so what's the first thing people see, and having the, the time of day change through the course of through the course of the day so it never feels stale and things are always changing and moving. What animations could you do? What Easter eggs could you put in the space so that it kind of promotes discoverability and exploration within the space? How does it end? You know, when do you want people to kind of leave the experience? I think that that crafting of that experience I think is really exciting because you're going to want to be there for the entire thing. I sometimes just have to think, am, am I trying to do too much? Whenever we have an idea, we push it and we push it and we push it. But I can't not push it as far as we possibly can. We're a systems company, we're a technology company, we have to embrace this new stuff. And I think everything we do when you work for a company that's trying to push the boundaries and you're trying to change the world, you have to take those risks. We've been saying for a while that what we try and do is build really complex technology that looks dead simple. Something that we do really well is don't overload the user with like tutorials or onboarding or um, you know it's like signposting. Just forget about all the instruction and take people into the experience and let them have a beautiful experience from the get-go, from the start. The start of the world building process is really just reference material so you're just collecting things whether that's from movies or games or illustrations, just anything really. You're just trying to like define what this could be. You typically start with like a really crude top-down map of where you want things located. 
It's like a really ugly architectural drawing of where you want things to be and how big do you want the space to be and, and then you go into 3D renderings and you bring that into the virtual world as an as a, as a optimised model that you can run around in basically. You never really know for sure that it's going to work, you kind of just, you, you just make sure that you have like a really good team and everyone's done what they can do to make sure it works and you're, you're all trying to fix it as it, as it goes along. But, um, yeah, for the most part, it's, it's, a, it's a new experience for the people that make this stuff as well. You, you can create a community still. You can definitely create um, you know, emotional impact for people when they come to these uh, destinations. You can create connection between people and uh, you can create an identity for people as well or enable people to create an identity within the world. These things are a kind of key to someone having a good time while they're there, right? Uh, they, you want them to have a great uh, kind of like emotional experience, you want them to feel something, you want them to feel connected to uh, if they have an avatar, the avatar, or the other if they don't, the other people that they're chatting with. I think it's really interesting seeing how people can just be themselves a little bit more and like let their personality show. You don't bring any of the things that tie to the physical world with you, whether that's like your, your age, your gender, your sex, um, your, your location, how you look, any sort of like confidence that you might be tied to your physical appearance, you can bring into the virtual world and not really have that. It's just your personality as is and that's the thing that people connect with. I know a lot of people that are quite extroverted online but quite introverted socially outside of, outside of online so, or just like in the physical world. So I think it's interesting to think about, I guess the pressures that come with like being a physical person out in the world, you don't really have that online. If we're talking about kind of like mood and, um, and feeling, you can give people this kind of almost a feeling of loneliness if you if you want to because that, that can make them feel like maybe they're in, a, in this vast space by themselves. So all those feelings are valid and they can all kind of combine to to help someone you know kind of you know feel immersed in the experience and have an authentic experience. I guess if there's one feeling that I'd like people to take away from this and it's gonna sound cheesy it's just happiness. I'd say joy. Joy is the word, have some fun. The world of blockchain is one that people don't understand. And when they don't understand it, they're afraid. It's just how we are. I mean, one of the big things for me is if you want to change the world, the world's gotta be on your side. We have a, a duty of care almost to the world out there and to say, look, we need to engage with you. So create this metaverse, this friendly world where everybody is welcome. You know, if, if I was to say what is success for me, it's removing all those barriers so that everybody can take part. You know, it still comes back to that core idea about bringing the world together with us. We want to make sure that the content is really um, thought about in terms of its delivery and its accessibility. You can make it as cool as you want, but the people are coming f to, to, to take something away from it. I mean, you have to be able to scale the experience because different people have access to different technology, uh, different you know, GPUs or whatever, different chips. Um, and we do our very best to scale it down so that people with lower spec devices uh, can still have some kind of access and still interact with other people. I think we're, we're constantly limited by the technology of our time, but we, we, we like to play within whatever is most accessible to people essentially. So as soon as something comes out, like if, if Apple comes out with a set of glasses that people can buy for under a thousand dollars and you can, you can create augmented reality experiences for thousands, millions of people, I think we'll definitely be there. What, I mean, whatever we can do to, to, to make you feel like you've actually transported to this space, we'll tap into. Yeah, you don't have uh, the sense of like touch or smell just yet, but um, yeah. We, we definitely try to amplify with, with what we can, I guess, manipulate ourselves. You need people to feel invested and feel rewarded. Um, their contribution and their, like, a, like a game, like a great game that you've played, right? You feel invested because of all the time you spent, but also probably because of like all the achievements you unlocked, all the things that you conquered. If you could also create and build and contribute objects, assets, items, um, things that you can trade, uh, things that other people want through economy within that world, then I think that's, I think that's where it's headed and I think that's where like, we're going to see some of these worlds really live on for you know, much longer than just a one-off event. I tell you what, one thing I said when they asked me if I wanted to join this company, they said, what do you want? And I just said, I don't want to be bored. And to be honest, the, the, 
This summit isn't boring in any shape or form. It might be crazy, but it ain't boring.